Hi everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to show you guys how we're going to create this CMS powered very basic team slider using Swiper.js and the next time after we've set the basics with this one we will take a look at this really cool parallax image gallery also using Swiper.js. So we'll cover this one today and I will release the video for this slider later this week. So let's get into Webflow. All right, so in Webflow, I have already set up a couple of basic things. Um, so we've got two sections, one for the other slider that we'll build in the next video, and now the one for the team slider, which just has a title and some swiper buttons, which basically have a nice hover animation. So feel free to check out the interactions panel because they were built using the Webflow interactions. Um, but we're here to focus on the swiper slider. So I have set up two CMS collections, one for the team members and one for the image slider, but we'll focus on the team members for now. And I basically asked ChatGPT to give me some random names and company positions. I found some images on Pexels and I gave each person a, a number for their ordering inside of the list. So if you'd like to make this website for a client or just for yourself and want to have easy control over what person comes first inside of the slider, um, this is the way to go. Um, so I'm going to cancel that. And let's check out the Swiper docs before we start building. So on the Swiper uh, website, I'll put a link in the description. There is a big button that says Get Started, which we'll use. And then we are going to go to the CDN option. And there is two files that we'll need. One is the CSS file and one is the JavaScript bit. So we'll copy the first one, and then I'm going to use the FinSuite custom code candy to easily put it in the site settings. I'll put a link to this in the description as well. So we put the CSS in the head, and we copy the script to put it in the footer before my code sandbox, and which I've already linked up. But it's important to put it before the code sandbox so that we can link to Swiper inside of the code sandbox. I'm going to save both and close. And let's continue on the uh, started, get started page. So the most important thing is the Swiper HTML layout. And it basically is three layers. So we have a Swiper class, a Swiper wrapper inside, and that holds all of our Swiper slides. So these three layers exactly match a collection list. So if we check that out, um, this is our swiper, this is our swiper wrapper, and each collection item is our swiper slide. So that's very convenient, um, so you don't have to mess around with anything. It's just put in the collection list and give all of these items their classes. Uh, like this. So we've got our swiper, swiper upper, and swiper slide. Now let's link this one to the team member's CMS. And it would be very tempting to immediately start styling these classes and to match the design that we're going for. But since we will have more than one swiper on our page, and I just recommend to do this anyway if you don't plan on having it right now, to just always give some combo classes. So if you will add another swiper slider in the future, maybe one that looks completely different, you don't have to overwrite all of the default styles. You just give it a new combo class and style that. So this one will be a class of his, don't have to put in the dot, of his team. We'll give that a width of 100% and hide the overflow just for here in Webflow. And the swiper wrapper will have the same combo class a width of 100%. Um, it doesn't need that actually, I think. Uh, a display of flex, of horizontal, make sure that we align to stretch all of the items and that we just define on the start. We don't need to define any gap. Um, we'll do that using Swiper. And then our Swiper slide will also get a, a combo class of his team. And this is where we can get started with the styling. So I believe they were about 20 rems or 320 pixels wide. And we are going to set the shrink to none 
So otherwise, the uh, the flexbox would try and squish all of our swiper slides inside of this wrapper here. Um, but we want it to overflow because we're going to swipe through it. Um, so inside of our swiper slide, I'm first going to add the team image wrapper. I should spell team correctly. <laughs> and we'll give that a width of 100%. And I'll use the top padding um, aspect ratio trick. So this will get an aspect ratio of 125%. So we always lock um, this exact aspect, aspect ratio, no matter how uh, small or big our screen is. We'll give, we'll hide the overflow, give a position of relative, and add a border radius to it. And inside of this is where we'll add the image that we can pull from the CMS. Let's give the alt text to be their names. Give a class of team image and make sure that it covers the entire wrapper by setting the position to be absolute um, and zero on all sides. Cool. Now we also want to show their name and company position. So inside of this swiper slide, I'm going to add in a div. I'm going to call it team info wrapper maybe. We'll vertically align these. And inside we will have a text block, which will have their position. And I created this class earlier called eyebrow, which is just a name that I like for like tiny bits of text. And underneath we will show their names. And we'll give that a class of heading medium. Now I do want to add some spacing. So on the info wrapper, I'm going to add in maybe eight pixels. And then on the actual swiper slide, I can give that a flex box as well, and then give that some more spacing. Perfect. Now, this is actually all we need because the um, spacing between and all of the functionality is going to be uh, some JavaScript. Now, we almost forgot, um, we do want a bit of padding here on the left and right of the end of the list to match our container and let's give it some top margin as well. Perfect. Now we're ready. So let's, pub let's publish this. We see by the way that there was a red warning, which is the non-descriptive link content, um, which refers to the swiper buttons. This has to do with like accessibility because there's nothing inside of this link block that refers to what the button does. So for assistive technologies, like it's it's not clear what this button does. And you can easily fix this by giving it an ARIA label of maybe previous slide. And do the same for the other one, but obviously for the next slide. And now this these buttons are good for assistive technologies. Always good to keep in mind. Let's move into our page. Let's refresh. Okay, there we go. And we obviously don't have a working slider yet um, because we need to go back to the Getting Started page and have a look at this bit, um, how we initialize Swiper. So I'm just gonna copy all of it. And I'm going to open up my code sandbox in side view and paste it all here. Now this gives us quite a bit of information. So we'll first create a variable called Swiper and that will initialize a new swiper on the class of swiper. And we've got some optional parameters. If we need pagination, which we don't, we do need some navigation errors and we don't have a scroll bar. Cool, let's change a few things because we will have more sliders and it's always easier to define and look back at the variables if they have a clear name. So maybe call this team slider and we don't want to declare the uh, swiper on the actual swiper class itself because we'll have multiple. This is why we created a combo class of his team. And then there is some optional parameters. Now, if we go to the swiper page and have a look here at the swiper core API, and then at the parameters, there is this huge list of options basically at your 
disposal um, with things you can do and some options. Um, I would highly recommend just having a look at this and see what the options are. Now, for example, we saw that we have a uh, direction of vertical declared here. We obviously want a horizontal slider. Um, now, in the direction tab, it says that it can be either a horizontal or a vertical slider. And this bit here, the, the orange column, says that this is the uh, standard option. So if we want it to be a horizontal slider, we can just get rid of the whole line and we don't need to declare it because that's the default option. So if we save this now and we refresh, we see that our slider is messed up. That's because we now need to define a couple things on the amount of slides per view because this will default to one huge slide. <laughs> um, and we can fix that by declaring slides per view. So let's say four. Make sure to end with a comma um, because we have some more options here. Save it, refresh. Okay, that's nice. We still need to take care of this space between, which is space between, and we give it 16 or equal to one rem. Now that's our space between, but our arrows don't work yet. Um, that's because the navigation looks for a next element and a previous element with the class of swiper button next and swiper button previous. Um, the class names that I gave these are almost equal. I just a shorthanded button to BTN because I found that if you use the swiper default class names and um, sometimes they can mess up with the swiper default arrows that can show up um, so if we shorthand this to BTN and this as well and save it refresh I can click through which is what we want now we can also drag this slider say we don't want that they have an option called allow touch move and we can set that to false refresh and now I cannot no longer drag the slider and just use the arrows so this is basically the very basic um, team member slider and as mentioned there's like a ton of options that you can go through um, to see which one you like um, we declared the slides per view by the way by setting it to four but say we wanted to uh, keep the actual width that we declared in webflow because now it's overriding the width of 20 rems i believe um, we can do that by setting the width the slides per view to auto refresh we see that they become a bit larger um, because they now are set to 20 rems and not the um, auto width so that's also an option I'm going to set it back to four and because now no matter on how large the screen is it will always show us four leaving us with for example if we go to smaller breakpoints with breakpoints um, checking out the API you're already here the breakpoints um, gives us quite a bit of options let's just copy this whole bit place a comma and paste it below now let's see how this works so the breakpoints are when the window width is larger than or equal to 320 pixels or 480 or 640 you can define these however you like but these cascade upwards um, so this is actually like a mobile first approach now let's just stick with like a very small mobile for now we're not going to do every single breakpoint let's remove these and see how this works so what, what it says now is that when the window width is larger than or equal to 320 pixels the slides per view is 2 and the space between is 20. so if we save this we will see that this here will um, change to two slides per view because this the screen size is bigger than 320 and thus will override this information here we see meaning uh, with this mobile first approach that we have to um, work the other way around so where we first had slides per view 4 and 16 let's give the mobile slides per view maybe 1.5 
and the six, uh, 16 space between will leave that. And then as we get larger, this is where we want to have the slides per view on four. And we don't need to change the space between. And we don't want this to be 320, but uh, 480, because if we go to Webflow and then check out the br max breakpoint for mobile, we see that this is 479. So if we want to target everything larger than the largest mobile, we set it to 480. And now save it and refresh here. We see that on large screens, it's four slides. And as we get smaller, it switches to the 1.5 slides per view. Now you can get very creative with this and completely change things and make sure that it's all nicely mobile responsive. Um, just keep in mind that you have to work mobile first with this approach um, and basically rethink your breakpoints. All right, so I hope this was useful to you and it was a, is now a bit less scary and difficult to create a very basic a slider on Webflow that is CMS powered and very easy to make responsive and has tons of features if you dig deeper. Um, so yeah, um, as promised later this week on Thursday, I will make a video on how to create this swiper slider that is a bit more advanced, but definitely not too much and still very easy to follow along. Uh, so stay tuned for Thursday and yeah, I hope to see you in that video. Cheers.